Welcome back, Grade 10 Math. Today's lesson is on Section 5.4, Factoring x squared plus bx plus c. Okay. Today's lesson is going to be going from standard form. Okay. This is a standard form quadratic expression. Turning that into a factored form quadratic expression. Okay. So we're taking ax squared plus bx plus c and putting it into its factors. Okay. Before we can do that, let's just quickly review. Um, how to go from the factors to the standard form. We do that using the FOIL method, okay? Multiplying the first terms, the outside terms, x times 3 is 3x, three the inside terms, 4 times x is 4x, and the last terms, 4 times 3 is 12. We then collect our like terms, get x squared plus 7x plus 12. Let's just do one more quickly to make sure that we have the hang of it. Okay, x plus 1 times x plus 5. x times x is x squared. Okay, the outside terms, x times 5 is 5x. The inside terms, 1 times x is just 1x. And 1 times 5 is just 5. Okay, collect our like terms. We get x squared plus 6x plus 5. Okay? Now, we want to be able to go from, we want to be able to, instead of, we know how to go from the factored form to the standard form, okay, using the FOIL method, but we want to now go from standard form to factored form. Okay? So let's see if we can find a trend that will help us do that. To do that, let's look at these numbers here. So if we have x plus 4 times x plus 3, and this is our answer, x squared plus 7x plus 12, Okay, when we expand it, let's find a relationship between the 4 and the 3 and this 12. Okay, you'll notice that 4 times 3 is 12. Now, how are the 4 and the 3 related to the 7? Okay, you'll notice that 4 plus 3 is 7. Okay, so this might be a trend that we can use to help us factor. Okay. Let's go back and look at the second question we did. 1 times 5 is 5, okay, and 1 plus 5 is 6, okay? So yes, yes indeed, this is a trend that we will be able to use in certain cases, okay, to help us go from standard form to factored form, okay? So here's the rule, okay? If we're going from standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c, and our a value is 1, okay, or it can be factored out, Okay, so if our a value is 1 or it can be factored out, okay, it appears like this, just x squared plus bx plus c. Because if you don't see a number in front of the x, you know there's actually a 1 there. Okay, oh, that looks like an 11. Okay, you know if you don't see the coefficient, you know there's an invisible 1. Okay, so today we're learning how to factor x squared plus bx plus c if a is 1. Okay, so if the number in front of the x squared is just 1, or if it can be factored out. Okay, so that's what we're learning today. So if we have x squared plus bx plus c, and we want it to be given in its factors, x plus r times x plus s, okay, r plus s must equal b, and r times s must equal c. Okay, so a math notation, this is the rules for common factoring ax squared plus bx plus c if a is 1 or it can be factored out. Okay. In, in English, how, how you would describe these rules, so to factor a quadratic expression of the form x squared plus bx plus c, you'll notice that the term in front of the x squared is just a 1, okay? You first find two integers whose product is c and whose sum is b. So two numbers who multiply to give c and add to give b. You then sub those integers in for r and s into y equals x plus r times x plus s, okay? So that's how we do factoring of ax squared plus bx plus c when a is 1 or it can be factored out. So let's go ahead and do a couple examples to make this more clear to us. Okay, here are the steps. Okay, I'll reference these while we go through it. Step number one, always, always, always step number one when we're factoring any quadratic expressions. Step number one, check if there's a common factor that can be divided out. Always, always, always check first if there's a common factor that we can take out, okay? After that, okay, 
as long as the A value is one, okay, we're going to we're going to be able to follow these steps, okay. So remember, these are only the steps for if the A value is one or if it's factored out, okay. So step number one, okay, if our A value isn't one, check if we can factor out whatever that value is, okay. Next, once we have an A value of one, okay, look at the C value and the B value, and then determine what factors multiply to give C and add to give B. Put those factors into x plus r times x plus s, or, or r and s. And then make sure nothing else can be factored. Okay? Good. So just a reminder, first step, if your a value isn't 1, check to see if that, if that value can be factored out. Okay? Good. If it can be factored out, then we can use these steps. Okay? So if the a value is 1, or it can be factored out, we can use these steps. Good. So, question number 1. We want to factor x squared plus 7x plus 12. You'll notice our a value is 1, so we can use these steps. Good. So we have to, let's first find factors, okay, that will multiply to give us 12. We need to find pairs of factors of 12 that will multiply to give 12, okay? We know 2 times 6 is 12, so 2 and 6 will give us 12. We know 12 and 1. They multiply to give 12. 12 times 1 is 12. We also know 3 times 4. They multiply to give 12. And how about also negative 2 and negative 6. They multiply to give 12. Okay. So all of these factors, they all multiply to give 12. Okay. So these are factors of 12 which multiply to give 12. Okay. Now we need to check which of these factors add to give 7. Okay, so remember we need to find factors that multiply to 12 and add to 7. Okay, so all of these factors multiply to 12, but which ones will add to 7? 2 plus 6 is 8, that doesn't add to 7. 12 plus 1 is 13, that doesn't add to 7. But 3 plus 4, that does indeed add to 7. Okay, um, negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8. Okay, but we found 3 and 4. Those are our factors that multiply to 12 and add to 7. Okay? So we've found the two numbers that will multiply to give the C value and add to give the B value. Okay? So this is what we want to use right here. Okay? We want to use the 3 and the 4. So, all right, sorry, our B value is 7, our C value is 12. Okay? And we found a set of numbers, okay, a set of factors that multiply to give 12 and add to give 7. Okay? So 3 and 4 are the numbers that do that, okay? 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 7, I mean 3 plus 4 is 7. 3 times 4 is 12, 3 plus 4 is 7. Good. Okay. So now, sub that pair of factors into y equals x plus r times x plus s for r and s. Okay? So our r is 3, our s is 4. It could be the other way around. It doesn't really matter. Okay? So what this is equal to is x plus 3 times x plus 4. And we're done. Okay? You can check and make sure this is right by using the FOIL method and expanding and make sure you get back to this expression here. Okay? Let's go on and do the next example. 1b. Okay? So we have a quadratic expression in standard form and the a value is 1. Good. So we can use these rules, okay? We can use the, we're going to call this sum and product factoring, okay? So if our a value is 1 or it can be factored out, we can use sum and product factoring, okay? So in this case, our a value is 1, so we can use sum and product factoring, okay? Our b value is 8. Our C value is 15. So we want to find factors of C which will multiply to give 15. Okay? So what factors of 15 multiply to give 15? Well, 15 and 1. Okay, those multiply to give 15. Um, what else? There's not many. 3 times 5, that also multiplies to give 15. 
Okay, um, negative 3 times negative 5, that multiplies to get 15. And negative 15 times negative 1, that multiplies to get 15 as well. Okay, so we found all the pairs of numbers that will multiply to 15. Okay, so all of these pairs of numbers multiply to get 15. But which of these pairs will add to give our B value of 8? Okay, 15 plus 1 is 16. 3 plus 5 is 8. Okay, so we found our pair of numbers, 3 and 5. Let me just show you that these other ones don't work. Okay, negative 3 plus negative 5 is negative 8. And negative 15 plus negative 1 is negative 16. Okay, but the ones we want, we want numbers that will multiply to give 15 and add to give 8. And we found those numbers are 3 and 5. Okay, so the pair of numbers are 3 and 5. We'll make our R value 3, our S value 5. All we have to do is sub that into X plus R times X plus S, and we get our answer of X plus 3, X plus 5. Nice and easy. Okay? You can expand this out using the FOIL method and make sure you get back to this expression to make sure you factored it properly. Okay. Next example. We have X squared plus 4X plus 6. Okay, so we need our B value is 4, our C value is 6. Okay, so we need to find factors of C, so factors of 6, that multiply to give 6 and add to 4. Okay, so let's first write all the ones, um, the factors of 6 that multiply to give 6. Okay, so 1 and 6, um, 2 and 3, negative 1, negative 6 negative 2, negative 3. Those all multiply to give us 6. Okay? Um, I can't think of any other factors that'll multiply to get, factors of 6 that'll multiply to give 6. Okay? Let's find if any of these sums give us 4. 1 and 6 is 7. 2 and 3 is 5. Negative 1, negative 6 is negative 7. Negative 2, negative 3 is negative 5. So you'll notice nothing gave us our B value of 4. Okay, so in this case, we can't use sum and product factoring to factor this expression. So we're going to say this one can't be factored. Okay, can't be factored. This is just this example is just in here to show us that we can't always use sum and product factoring um, to factor quadratic expressions. Okay, sometimes we'll have to use methods that we'll learn um, in the next chapter. Okay. Good. So just what you want to take away from this one is you're not always going to be able to use sum and product factoring. You're not always going to be able to find numbers that multiply to give 6 and add to give 4. Okay, so you're not always going to be able to find numbers that multiply to give C and add to give B, even though our A value in this case is 1. Okay, so it's not always going to work. But when it does, it's an effective way of factoring. Okay, number 3. So we have x squared minus 29x plus 28. We want to factor it. Our a value is 1, so we can use sum and product factoring. Our b value is negative 29, so we want to find numbers that add to negative 29, and our c value is 28. So we want numbers that multiply to give 28. Okay? This is the first one where we've had a subtraction sign. So in our pair of factors that we choose, we know at least one of them is going to have to be negative. Okay? Good. So factors of C, which is 28, okay? Let's find pairs that are going to multiply to give 28. 1 and 28, well, um, 2 and 14. Um, we know, but we know one of them is going to have to be negative in order to get to this negative 29 number here, okay? So how about um, negative 1 and negative 28? Those multiply to give 28. Okay, let's try those. And negative 2 and negative 14, those multiply to give positive 28 as well. Okay, 